You know, Firefly appears to be two different people. I think we can we can all agree. There's the person we've mostly come to interact with, a kind-hearted kid who's who's dealing with an unfortunate situation in the form of entropy loss syndrome that renders her unable to free her body in the real world, and thus she finds solace in a dream. I can forget about all the doctor's advice. I can listen and see and touch and think and understand whatever I want with my body. Uh, but, but, but then but then there's Sam, a, a less than friendly looking feller who seems to have adopted the scorched earth policy when it comes to fighting crime. Leave now and nobody gets hurt. Or else all of you will die here. About the Stellaron Hunter who was behind your ultimate departure. Most of the things that I'm good at only apply to villains who need no mercy. Uh, since the reveal that these two are, in fact, the same person, there's been one, you know, teeny, 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 tiny little question that's been, you know, rummaging through my mind, and it's why did Firefly become a Stellaron Hunter? And it's not even like this was some fluky accident. She joined the program really early on. Uh, it's, clearly, she liked the, the vision Elio, Elio had set out for the entire program. Uh, Sam was either first or second, depending on whether the person Elio was talking to in Kafka's character story five is Sam. Quote, go to Turgon. Turgon goes to five and locate an abandoned building at coordinates. Oh, fuck that. Answer it. There is an untouched can drink under the window still on the first floor. Take it. Wait until 11, 12 a.m. on Wednesday and place the can at the entrance of the building. Kafka will appear two minutes later. There is a chance she will stop to investigate the can. Then, take the chance to throw this ball at her feet. I will take over and converse with her from there. There's also a chance that Kafka will ignore the can. In that case, just throw the ball away. You will die, but death will come for everyone. As for the future that you yearn, I will realize it. Wanted order by Destiny's Slave. Uh, given we know for a fact Sam was already a hunter by the time Blade and Silverwolf joined, and the fact that Elio told whoever this was that as for the future that you yearn for, I will realize it, eh, it kind of makes me think he's talking to another Stellaron hunter given that's the reason they joined Elio in the first place. Aside from the Stellaron hunter's grander scheme of collecting Stellarons and prepping for the big war versus the Nook, each member of the Stellaron hunters has a goal that Elio has said he will help them realize. Every Stellaron hunter has a deal with Elio. I do not know the nature of those deals, but I do know that Kafka and I agreed to take orders from Elio. She must have sought something extraordinary. Everything she does comes at a great cost. Uh, furthermore, the companion mission overview writes, quotes, They who chase after fear, they who crave demise, they who inquire meaning, they who challenge life, they who see the future. They reveal, they act, and they will eventually obtain their hunt. Uh, they who chase fear is Kafka, they who crave demise is Blade, and as for the next two, I'm a bit confused. According to the wiki, which I know isn't official, but you know, some smart fellas over there. They who challenge life is Sam, and they who inquire meaning is Silverwolf, which is kinda, which is kinda wild. I thought they'd be flipped seeing as Silverwolf is all about challenging any and everything. I mean, hell, how many times does she challenge Skrulem at this point? Furthermore, her story quest has a line from Skrulem about the mentality of those from Punk Lord, writing, quotes, I recall a story about Punk Lord, and it said that graffiti is a special kind of meaning there. Hackers see reality as a magnificent game and attempt to finish the stage we know as life. In this sense, they who challenge life seems like a more on par description for Silverwolf. So, I mean, can someone tell me if I'm fucking missing something here? I have no idea what's going on, bro. Now, with that said, I can also see the other argument, which is given Firefly is living with a debilitating disease but continues to persist on, and part of the reason she's probably looking for the Watchmaker's legacy might have something to do with fixing her condition, she in her own way is challenging life. In any case, as it stands right now, Firefly's role within the Hunters is weird, or at least in the way she describes it. I don't know people's hearts as well as he and Kafka do. Nor do I have a specialty like Silver Wolf and Blade. Most of the things that I'm good at only apply to villains who need no mercy. I, how is her role different from Blade's? They both just 
Well, just kill. That's it. What, what, what the fuck's blade specialty? <laughs> this nigga just has a sword. <laughs> you have a flamethrower. I, I don't really see the difference here. Yeah, Kafka's got the subterfuge, and and Silverwolf's got the hacking prowess. Elio can just uh, see the fucking future, future possibilities. Apparently, uh, you two just kill. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe her background will will help clear this up. We don't know an insane amounts, but. We know some. Uh, Firefly herself says her home was destroyed long ago, but doesn't really remember the specifics. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago. But how? <laughs> it was probably the doing of the Legion or the Swarm. Uh, there's a greater than not chance this world she's speaking of is Glamoth, which itself was a planet brutally attacked by the Swarm, and is also where the armor she wields allegedly comes from. Glamoth was once a prosperous empire whose controlled area is said to span tens of thousands of light years. My god, the logistics of maintaining an empire of that size. Keep in mind, the Milky Way galaxy is 52,000 light years across. Also keep in mind, part of the problem with the Roman Empire was that it was just too damn big. So, I mean, alrighty. Uh, the Empire had a Majesty Empress named Titania, who wished to grow the Empire even further by uniting the barbarians on the border. However, she wanted to go about this in a lovely manner. She authorized the construction of a massive fleet that was meant to travel to the border and bring to those barbarians the fruits of civilization and unite them born of love. However, in the midst of these uh, missions, uh, the Swarm would descend unto the Empire, and they proved far too troublesome for the armies of Glamoth to deal with, causing the Empire to shatter, but then, out of nowhere, silver-clad knights, the Iron Cavalry, soon descended from beyond the sky as well, and proceeded to beat the swarm like it owed them rent, putting an end to the threats of the Great Glamoth Empire. Or did they? This story I just told you was a lie, a dream even. There was no empire, there was no majesty, rather, instead of Glamoth being an empire, it was a republic, and instead of Titania being an actual empress, she was just a puppet's ruler, if you can even call her that, created by the Council for the sole purpose of commanding the Iron Cavalry via telepathy. Quote, In order to turn the tide in the horrific invasion of the Swarm, the ruling Council threw down the gauntlets and resolved to alter the essence of humanity in an effort to adapt to the war. They will create a weapon born to fight. The result of this was Titania, the Empress who holds no power telepathically commands and controls the knights connected to her. In the dreams that these warriors are woven into, the sole meaning of their existence is to guard Titania and her empire. In their short lives, they studied, fought, received the Empress's commands, faced the enemy fearlessly, and died with honor. Following the turning of the tides of war, despite the fact that the swarm no longer blotted out the sun, a new problem presented itself which is the Iron Cavalry were now blotting out the sun. Uh, following this, the Republic of Glamoth would crumble, but no one really knows the reason why. It could be. It had something to do with the lie, however. Quote, No one knew when this falsehood was revealed. Was it from the day when the old humans in Glamoth's territories fell below a certain percentage? Was it the day when scientists realized the Empress was beginning to revolt against her captivity? Or maybe the day when the Swarm's onslaught dissipated into thin air? Needless to say, however, according to Welt, Sam is indeed a remnant of the Iron Cavalry. So, I mean, if nothing else, Firefly being unsure of how Glamoth fell does line up with how historians view it. While the Iron Cavalry were bred into solely focusing on defending Titania and the Empire, ultimately, Firefly's reason for wielding the armor appears to be a bit different and seems like it has more to do with her entropy loss syndrome, making her unable to function on her own in the real world, hence why she values the experience in a dream so much, because it's either the first time or an extremely rare opportunity for her to feel the world around her with her actual body, instead of within a killing machine that she's bound to because of her condition. It's this dichotomy of experiences that could explain why she's a member of the Stellar Run Hunters in the first place, because she wishes to experience the real world by her own machinations, and fucking uh, Elio's apparently the fucking genie who can make everyone's wishes come true. In this splendid metropolis, some have a dream called Panacone, but some have dreams that are no different from reality. Even though everyone who comes here harbors the same motive in the beginning. And it's likewise for me. I have a wish I want to achieve so badly in the real world. 
But I can't. So... I want to give it a shot here. Oh, so I'm curious. Did she just, like, find the armor and pick it up? Or was she always a member of the regiments? If so, how did she break through the illusion that her sole purpose was to defend the Empress and the Empire? Wait, didn't this bitch say she couldn't dream? I was born without the ability to dream. A lot of questions she needs to answer for. Also, I, you know, I've seen people say she's Titania, but I don't, I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> the only similarities between them right now are like, they're female, they're from Klamath, and they have something to do with the Iron Cavalry. I, I don't, is there anything else to go on? Is <laughs>